Uno dos tres. Uno dos tres. Is that is that how it's done? You go uno dos tres. What's what's some other numbers? San mi ichi. Oh, I did that backwards. Um, what's it in uh, in German? Ein Wein dry. Ein Wein dry. I'll do it in English. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNS stream today on this fine 29th of April 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been hectic, so much stuff going on and so much stuff still going on, but uh, you know, we make do, we, we do it. We do, we do what's going, I guess, what's going on. There's a ton of uh, things to talk about this, uh, this week, so how about let's dive right into it. What? Look at that, easy, easy money, easy money. There we go. So, uh, yeah, no, we're playing Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Quest 2 a bit more today. Um, I hope you all, uh, will enjoy, uh, the stream. In the last stream, uh, we sort of continued, well, started the, um, the whole quest of grabbing some, uh, ancient, ancient elements, ancient, uh, signals, sigils. Crests, if you will. I think they are actually called crests. And uh, we wandered around a ton. And we're at this point now where it's like... We've sort of just got to pick up the last, like, two. I think we're pretty good. Like, if we go to info, we've got three of them. We've got to still get two more somewhere. Uh, where are they? That's a big question. But, uh... I think they're, they're not in... They're not really that hidden. It's just a couple of, couple of places that we haven't really gone to. Um, pretty much. So, uh, I think we spent a lot of the last stream trying to get to, uh, like, you know, solve the mystery of this one town and it's got its, like, keys and stuff like that. Uh, so I think we can actually go back there and properly explore it now. And, uh, the boat's in the, boat's in the dock, because of course it's in the dock. Where else would it be? But yeah, no, I hope you're having a wonderful week. This is the end of April. We're, we're, we're nearly there. The end of yet another month. 2024 is fleeting and is escaping us at a very rapid rate. Because, uh, this marks about a third of the way through the year. But, uh, no, I, I feel like I'm accomplishing a ton and getting a ton of stuff done, so that's all good. And we're gonna spend a bunch of that time fighting even more slugs. Just slugs everywhere. You know how it do be. Um, but yeah, uh, so I got I got a couple of like a couple of topics, not a ton of topics, but a lot of like big ones, and I have a fair bit to say about them. Um, so how about let's start off with number one, which is a return to uh, the Intel over um, you know instability stuff from last week. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, actual, like, I guess, uh, media personnel and an official statement from Intel, uh, which- Hold on, let me see if I can actually pull this up. Da 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 da. Um, because I think it would be good to pull up. Uh, but we have an official statement from Intel basically about, uh, the- the instability. Where is this at? Here we go. This is me not really looking what I'm doing, I'm just pressing A all the time, so... Intel, right, has observed that this issue may be related to out-of-specification operating conditions resulting in sustained high voltage and frequency during periods of elevated heat. Which, I'm not 100% sure if uh, uh, sustained high voltage is the problem. Um, and I know it's like, isn't that the official Intel statement? It's like, yes, but I... more on that in a bit. More on that in a bit. Uh, I am not even on the right, like, side. I'm, like, sailing <laughs> the, wrong, the wrong way here. Because, uh, this is the island. I need to sort of get around the continent. So if I keep going north, I'll eventually loop around to the right spot. So there's the town where I just was. Oops. Hi there, Blender, not looking where he's going. So I think this is, uh, hold on, let's, uh, let's open up the map. Uh, 
Oh, we're still going, still going. What I need to do is that uh, we're going to spot the, the southwestern continent in a moment. And, uh... Oh, that, that's, that's the, that's the, uh, the, uh, magic item. Chilling there. Well, not chilling there anymore. Uh, here we go. So here's, here's this island. I want to move around to the right of it a little bit. And then uh, eventually we'll hit a channel. And that channel is where we need to really end up being. Uh, but yeah, uh, so continuing on the intel statement, sorry. Um, analysis of affected processes show some parts experience shifts in minimum operating voltages which may be related to operation outside of intel speci uh, specified operating conditions. So, it shifted its minimum operating voltage. Um, while the root cause has not yet been identified, Intel has observed the majority of the reports of this issue are from users with unlocked or overclock capable motherboards. Intel has observed 600 and 700 series chipset boards often set BIOS defaults to disable thermal and power delivery safeguards designed to limit uh, processor exposure to sustained periods of high voltage and frequency. For example, disabling current excursion protection, enabling the ICC Max Unlimited bit, disabling thermal velocity boost and or enhanced thermal velocity boost, additional settings which may increase the risk of uh, system instability, disabling C states, using Windows Ultimate Performance Mode, increasing PL1 and PL2 beyond Intel recommended limits. Intel requests system and motherboard manufacturers to provide end users with a default BIOS profile that matches Intel recommended settings. So Intel strongly recommends the customer's default BIOS settings should ensure operation within Intel's recommended settings. And in addition, Intel strongly recommends motherboard manufacturers to implement warnings for end users, alerting them to any unlocked or overclocking feature usage. Um, they will be publishing a public statement regarding the issue status and all this stuff. Uh, this upcoming month, but there will be, you know, they're saying, hey, this is something that should be done kind of as soon as you can, motherboard manufacturers. Um, and that seems mostly fair, like, there's a little bit about how, like, increased voltage is the problem, which it's like, it's not, I mean, technically, increased voltage will lead to degradation of the chip, but also, um, the problem hasn't actually been because the voltage is too high. The instability is because the voltage is too low right now. Um, when you increase the voltage, the core cl the clocks can be sustained a bit better, which is why the instability is there. The the cores are demanding a bit of, or rather the processors are demanding a fair bit of, man, these hunters, I tell you. The processors are demanding a bit of, you know, extra juice for the specific workloads. And the question is, what what is the workload? Um, the answer, I, I think the specific problem seems to be uh, certain Unreal Engine games are trying to do some shader compilation and it just kicks in a bit too bursty and that causes the processor to try and really go hard just for a moment and the voltage doesn't catch up and then the processor goes Aah! and you get something going on which is usually a process dying because it's the thing that is currently really executing at that point in time um, but uh you know it, it might be there may be instances where it's not just that um, so, uh, okay, we can heal here, but I think also we can head to the town and just, like, do a proper stop-off. Because the fun part is that the boat is gonna be there, so it's like, you can go to the town. Did we actually have a save in the town? Was that... Because that's just a regular old church, and that's leaving the town, so cool. Um... Uh, I don't know if we did. We had to have had an inn, right? There you go. Yeah, it's a bit of a cost, but eh. Well, I don't think the save was up there, so... Yeah, maybe there wasn't a save. That's gonna be a little bit of a doozy if you do die, because you go back to the save area. Not the inn, so... But, uh, we'll just play it. We'll play it safe. We'll play good. Ah! Gotta deal with these hunters, I tell ya. Free damage, though. Very nice. Um, so, yeah. So, when you run the processor with an increased voltage, you can, le you can maintain that stability at higher clocks. The... 
balancing act comes in when the processor, well, when, because you, you're running at a higher voltage, which does lead to some faster degradation, but depending on the voltage, it's like, eh, it's fine. Like, I think the general consensus is 1.4 is sort of the limit before your processor is sort of going to degrade faster than you'd really want it to. Um, your mileage may vary, sometimes your processor may be perfectly fine for its lifetime at 1.4, sometimes it might not, but generally, once you start going above that, you're sort of guaranteeing it's gonna, you know, conk out at some point in its life or do something weird. Uh, welcome, by the way, to the Full Moon Tower. It's, yep, uh, that's right, another tower full of, uh, full of wond wonders and all that jazz. Um... So we've got like some kind of room over there, uh, I think this is another one where there's like tons of, tons of staircases all over and we've got ghouls, Ooh. Fire bow. I don't think ghouls are too bad though. Um, but more importantly in this case, increasing the voltage does mean increased power draw increase power draw just whatever the he you know is going on it doesn't matter about all the other settings but increase power draw is increased temperature and increased temperature means also the strusy might as well use that now you know? uh increased temperature means uh the oh my gosh there's so many items all over the shop um increased temperature means uh hotter, I guess. And hotter means that the voltage actually required to do certain things can change in places, and most of the time it gets worse. Most of the time. So, uh, that's why, like, it's a bit of a complex problem, because depending on just what temperature it is, and it can actually be, like, whether you are in a cold room or not. Um. Damn, they weren't really... Ah, oh, my magic... We gotta take out that gold ore because he's gonna be very mean. Yeah, my magic. I need it. Although you don't need it for uh, for this spell, I guess, because it's the item that's doing the magic here. There we go. And there goes more magic. Very nice. worst part is that it's gonna be like, yep, I'm out of magic in order to leave. But fortunately, the walk back to an inn is not very long, so... Uh, so this is the second floor. I think it does lead up into more stuff. Uh, in fact, most of the staircases from the bottom floor led down. But, uh, in particular, I think if you go down the bottom right corner, you'll find another chest here. What's this? The Death Seed? That's me. I'm deaf, I guess. Uh, let's give this one to Nana, because she's never really going to have much defense. Her grub increased by four. Whoa! Very nice. Uh, so anyway, let's go back up a floor. Ah. Oh boy, evil clown, you know. The thing that was one hitting everyone. He doesn't have as much health, though. There's something weird. <laughs> that one... That one had lots of health. Let's get a bit of healing going on. Um, so, yeah. The, the equation is pretty complex, but generally, if you're running with a higher voltage, you'll get more stability, but you will... The Mystic Nut? Now, the Mystic Nut, we know, needs to go to... Nana. Give her a bit more max MP. Uh, let's head up this uh, middle left staircase. Because now this leads us to the third floor, but in particular, another another dead end, but at least there's a chest. Um, but yeah, the... Oh my gosh, they do hit real hard. <laughs> I prefer the fire bow. There's not really any point in Nana attacking if she can just, you know, use bolt all the time. Oh. 
Nice attack. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, naturally, people who run with higher voltages might often not run into more power. They actually might run into less power because it means that when you have a lower voltage, that means that the processor tries to draw more, well, it, it tries to hit the clocks and sometimes goes harder and that means, well, okay, and then I draw more current and then, okay, the power usage is very high. Lots of money, wow. Um, so that's, that's often how that works, I guess. Um, introduce, uh, Asus and Gigabyte at least have introduced, uh, some, um, uh, this is an area down here, but I actually don't think this goes anywhere. Like, or rather, I think this just goes towards the bottom floor, which is, like, we're already, we're here. So, <laughs> there's nothing of value at the bottom floor. It's a bit weird looking, to be honest, because, like, sometimes it's a wall and sometimes it's not. Oh my gosh, we got some guys all over. Who is Minus, the Gold Orc or the Vampirus? We hit the Vampirus here. Hopefully we get some, you know, just some levels, because uh, these guys are definitely never nice. Um, so, yeah, so both Asus and Gigabyte have introduced these uh, baseline profiles, and uh, the baseline profiles effectively try to set, uh, you know, the processors to whatever Intel's recommended uh, specs are because a lot of motherboard manufacturers as I as I mentioned last week a lot of motherboard manufacturers don't care They they put the boards out and they they they'll just run the processor at some you know overboard state Most of them or not most but a lot of them will say the power limits are 4095 watts which they will never reach 4095 watts that will never ever 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 happen but it effectively means it's unlimited. It's like if it if it wants power, it's gonna get power. That's that's all it all it will do. Um, I think this floor would just go up again. I don't think there's any mystery to where you need to go. Uh, okay, so we need to you know we need to keep taking out more uh, more of these dudes. Oops, use the amulet, which is not the right not the right thing to do. I'm actually curious if I need to re-equip that after the battle. <laughs> this is gonna get kind of annoying, isn't it? Oops, I just... The yeah, I amulet mean, was the third item again. Okay. Oh, and he can heal? I mean, that's not gonna do too much, but... Yeah. Bolts of lightning. Uh, so yeah, so they introduced these things which should hopefully run at the you know the stock voltages. Because also as well, a lot of these processors or a lot of the you know the out of the box experience runs under vaulted, uh, which is kind of how they achieve these high clocks and things like that. A lot of these processors are never really going to hit the advertised turbos if um, if uh, the um, the, sorry, they're not going to hit the advertised turbos if the processors are not undervolting like this, which is a bit of a problem. And that's something that, you know, hey, let's throw some shade to Intel. One, they don't enforce these settings very much. Um, and so there's definitely that. And two, um, I guess, you know, they, well, sorry, they don't enforce the settings because it does make the processors look good until they stop working and then it's, then it's terrible. Um, but, uh, but also, um, I think it's, uh, well, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> ah, ah, uh, I believe you can also step, oh, that just leaves the entire place. Well, we might as well heal. <laughs> Gosh, I really hate the, um, the, the, like, the three groups. Hard, don't they? Oh well. 
Uh, uh, anyway, yeah, so, so, okay, so problem solved, right? There's some out of the box experience. Well, the problem is, is that Intel's, yeah, Intel's base spec is actually weirdly overvolted. And not saying that it's like overvolted as in it will kill your processor, but overvolted as in it will draw way more power than it typically does. And that means that, uh, when. Pe well, okay, so this all ties in with a, a hardware unbox video. It's been a while since I've ripped into a hardware unbox video. Um, I, okay, disclaimer, by the way, I don't, I, I like the guys. Um, I've never met them, I've never chatted to them, but, you know, they're, they're passionate and they're willing to try and get things right. But, they are also very sensationalist, and, uh, you know, when people call them AMD unboxed, when they do this, yeah, it kind of, you know, Hey, they gotta get it right. So in their most recent video as of today, um, which I forgot the, the title, but it's basically like, Intel CPUs are unstable and it's Intel's fault. Which is like, okay, you know, okay, throwing some shade, but... I don't, like, I don't think it's not Intel's fault, but I also don't think it's very Intel's fault. I think it, there's a lot of onus on the, the motherboard manufacturers for getting it right. And, um, you know, because... Like, I especially think it's really on them to make sure that the processor is working. And when people say, like, oh, but it's Intel's job to, like, make sure the processor... It's like, well, they work, and then the motherboard manufacturers try to take it one step further, and if it stops working from that point, then okay. Because these processors clearly run Intel's, like, spec. It, it clearly does that. Um... What it sort of, well, almost, maybe. <laughs> if it doesn't, then yeah, okay, yeah. I, I like, I need to do more testing, certainly. Um, but like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, there is a bit of onus. Like, the motherboard manufacturers clearly aren't going to sell you like a motherboard that like doesn't work, or rather, like aggressively does stuff that most CPUs can't do. Like, they're never gonna do that, right? Hopefully not. Hopefully. Um... And, uh, someone also on top of this, it's like... There's actually, on top of that, depending on if they're, if they're relevant in this case, the system integrators. As in, if you're buying a computer off Dell, then it should work! And it's on them to validate that everything that they are bundling and selling you works. Because if it doesn't, it's on them. And I'm like, yeah, no, I agree with that, actually. I agree with that. Um, the last step is sort of on the DIY crowd, because clearly, if you're buying a KSQ processor... Um, by the way, I love that we've got these two doors just to lead down a floor. And where does it go? It goes down another floor! Whoa! Oh my gosh, we gotta deal with, uh, these fellas. Uh, oops. <laughs> we're, not, we're not unequipping a shield. Let's take out these ghouls. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it is somewhat on the DIY people to also go, hey, if you're buying, very nice, I'm glad I just spawned another enemy. Um, if you're buying a fancy processor like this, um, there's a little bit of an onus that you are able to, like, properly know what the settings are. Because, I mean, that's the whole point of why you bought an unlocked processor, right? If you, like, if you don't care, if you actually are gonna buy one of these processors, and you're not gonna at least toy around with some of the settings, you might as well just buy the non-K CPU. Like, actually, like, I saw the, um, the 12900F for, like, was it the 12, or was it the, th I think it was the 13900F, for 700 Australian dollars during the sales, which is, like, actually, yeah, I think it was 700, if it was 600, I'm like, oh my gosh, jeez. Um, but it's like, that, that was a pretty okay price, and it's like, you're, like, percentage points less than the K processor. The K processor is a little better bin, but it's like, you're just a little bit under. You do lose the, the features, and to some degree I'm like, why are they locked down? I don't think there's really any reason why it's locked down, like, it's just, you could just advertise it as a worse bin processor, Intel, but... Okay, you know, we'll play- we'll play by your rules, in which case, yeah, like, you know, since users have the ability to actually fix this, because you don't need a gigabyte, you don't need an Intel spec 
profile in order to set the things correctly. And to some degree as well, uh, which we'll get into um, with the rest of the video, you don't actually need, like, everything there. The moon grows full and wanes. The ocean's tide ebbs and flows. It is all destiny. You have reached Loom Tower. Now open the chest. That too is destiny. And inside this chest we have... The Moon Shard? Yep, that's right, that's our new shard. There's actually a little more dungeon above, which has one singular chest that I'll go out and grab. Um, it's a little anticlimactic, it's like, I don't know, I'm kind of expecting some boss fights. And uh, it's weird, like, one jail with one of the shards had a boss fight. But, like, this tower that we worked, you know, a fair bit to get. No boss fight. I like how a lot of these towers get smaller as you go up as well. Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a five and a half, ain't it? Um, but yeah, I, I'm not saying it's like you know it's the DIY person's fault because their processor doesn't work. Like, like at some point, if your processor has properly degraded and it's really not acting in spec, yeah, it's not your fault. Seriously, it's not. But there is a degree of like people aren't idiots. Like, like, what we should be doing is telling people how to run their processes as effectively as possible. And while everyone's processes are going to be slightly different and there's going to be a, a window of, like, how much actually works for them and how much doesn't, and you might be a little disappointed if, you, if your processor doesn't run as well as someone else's, it's like, a lot of them have the ability to run fairly well, but you gotta, you gotta have the know-how and you gotta have the time. And most people who buy it just need the know-how. So, why don't we, you know, knowledge share, you know? Um, so, continuing the video, for some odd reason, Hardware Unbox seems to attribute the problem to the power drawer. So we got another wizard ring, nice. They attribute the problem to the power drawer. They make a comment about how Intel runs with, un well, rather, Intel motherboards run with unlocked power limits, because uh, that means that they win in gaming benchmarks. This is something where I will go, hey, uh, citation. Not because, like, Intel runs with higher power limits. I mean, Intel, you know, Intel motherboards do run with higher power limits. Also, Intel's processors run with more power than AMD's processors when you try to run a game on them. Certainly. And in fact, actually, I, I'm, like, in no case does an Intel processor beat an AMD processor when you fix for power, except I think at, like, 250 watts, because there was in insane diminishing returns on AMD at that point. Like, but anywhere under that, which is most of the time, and including basically every game, that's the case. The the, the problem is, is that the Intel processors are rated for 253 watts, that's a default power limit, and obviously when unlocked they'll go further. But also, that's under an all-core workload. Name one game that is an all-core workload. None. None of them are. Most games are intensive on one or two or sometimes four threads. They will definitely try to use maybe more, but that's it. They're not like, that's, they're not, they're not too much more than, you know, than, uh, I guess that many threads. Um, and most of these, pr and no way does maxing out one core on, on a 24 asterisk core processor actually mean it maxes out the power limit. That doesn't happen. So, even with a power limit set to 253 watts, what a lot of people might actually spot is that, like, your processor will negligibly... Neg... Oh my gosh. Neg... Oh, I'm, I'm never getting that right. It won't... It won't... You won't spot it. You won't detect that it's running over volt... Or over the, the power limit, basically. And you, you won't spot a, a power you know, problem with it. It's gonna be, you know, virtually the same. This might actually fix the problem, by the way. Simply setting this power limit might actually be the solution to your, uh, your instability, if you actually have it, by the way. Because what might actually be happening is that with an unlimited power limit, uh, the processor might go, hey, within some short timing window, I might choose to draw a crazy amount of current, which means I can actually, um... I can actually, uh, go, go ham. Um... I think we're actually gonna go to, uh, all the way to the right now. Uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, what this might mean is that in that very, very brief bursty bit, the power limit might actually kick in and go, hey, don't, don't actually go too hard on the current, and that means that, hey, you don't actually hit the weird high clock and the voltage instability doesn't actually appear. That actually might happen. And so, this whole problem, for some people, reportedly, may actually just be solved by setting that power limit to the normal setting. It means, for the most part in games, because most of the time in games you don't hit that power limit, and uh, at least under sustained load, you su well sorry, under, under a sustained gaming scenario, you probably won't, because you're only maxing a couple of cores at most. Um, so this actually might be the, the solution. Um, the other thing that they also notice is that the Gigabyte board, for some reason, instead of the power limit being 253 watts, 253 watts, it was 125 watt and uh, 253 watts. The Asus one, it was fine, um, but the Gigabyte motherboard they tested with was really weird, and um, I feel like that that's the Gigabyte board running uh, what I can only say is the t SKU processor spec. Because that has a reduced power limit compared to the the KSQs, and also, by the way, the KS processors have a, uh, a 320 watt power limit, so uh, that one's a bit weird because that actually is kind of in spec and it's going to run kind of unstable. I actually think it might actually be worse for the SQ um, people because they are going to be running their processors at higher clocks and therefore with higher voltages and power limits. Um, hopefully, they're better binned for that, but technically. You know, a 14900KS is only better than 13900K, or better manufactured 13900K. There's really no process improvement going on between those processes. Um, so... And, that, and that's the other weird part as well, like, I always... I noted this last week as well. The, the fact that, like... Like, I, I have had a 13900K for, like, a year and a half now. Um... And I'm not saying I never experienced the instability. What I'm saying is the instability was there day one with certain workloads. I found it uh, sort of existed with FMmpeg, and I had some really weird Cinebench behavior where my first run would actually get like 40,000, and that like if I did a bursty run, and then I, the moment I tried to keep it going, it would severely power limit, and it would just go to like, or, or thermal limit, and it would just go to like 34,000 as a score. This is R23 for Cinebench. Um, and what I did was I literally set the power limit and I would consistently get 36,000, which is less exciting, but it, one, wouldn't crash an FMmpeg, and it also wouldn't, uh, it, it would get a, a generally better score. Like, not better in the best case, but certainly better more often. Like, I would take 36,000 that I can keep running over and over again, then 40,000 once, and then 34,000 every time afterwards. And that's just by setting the power limit. You could probably, and also disabling multi-core enhancement, because I never had good good luck with that. Um, there's probably more things I can do. I really need to test around with undervolting more, um, but since I run things on my computer a ton, like I sort of... What do, we, what do we do to open this up? Do we need to... We get a... Uh... What do we do? Ah, yes! You gotta use the moon shard itself. This just causes the shoals to disappear. There may be some other points in the game where you can actually make the shoals disappear. But, uh, welcome to uh, what is referred to the volcanic sea cave. Uh, we got, we got a doozy of a dungeon here. You know, everyone likes a good doozy of a dungeon. Oh my gosh, evil eye! Everyone likes a good evil eye as well. Oh, that's a spell and a half. I guess the good thing is that this cave is just kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not really that hard to get to. But it is just like... Yeah, I... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is this is gonna be a doozy with everyone falling asleep all the time. Or just draining my magic. 
Okay. How much health do these, uh... These fellas have? The, the evil eyes? They've only got 50, which isn't too bad. And the experience is okay. This experience is actually really good for the, um... The... The evil clowns. It's 107. Ah, yes, of course. We're gonna need to do a step guard here. And then we're gonna hope, hope that we can... Oh, no. The same encounter yet again. I didn't... He I did not heal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh... Yeah, don't... Don't risk it. But I might have still risked it. And I still risked it. Cool. You don't really have anything, do you? <laughs> Just go for it. Just go for it. Well, I got some of them. That's okay. Uh, okay, um... Do I... I... I yeah, I didn't re-pick up a, uh... I, um, it just so leaf today, so well, we might as well oh, cast that again. Um, how about let's try and let's try and run up because there is a chest just up here, so I might be able to get away with like picking up this chest without dying, and then we can like evac out. <laughs> there you go. It's a bit of money. It's a bit of money which I can use to. I can use to, uh, get some goodies. And we might as well just return, because uh, then I can fly back. Well, that was a bit uneventful, wasn't it? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. You gotta fix Nana, she's fallen over. Oh, wait, that's a save. I mean, sure, I guess I can save as well. That works too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so, anyway, so the video then tries to test quite a bunch of games with, uh, the, um, you know, whatever the unlocked on the Aces board is, as well as also the, um, the, where is the church? Oh, it was upstairs in that place. I always keep getting thrown off, because it's, the guy's sitting there, but, uh, you know, it's, it's upstairs in this place. Yeah, what a weird, what a weird spot. 280 gold, they pull me out of house and home here. We'll get there though. Uh, but yeah, and, and they naturally did show that like, okay, the processes are gonna run, you know, worse. Um, in particular in Cinebench, which is a proper all core workload, yeah, it does. Yes, definitely. Um, but in most games, the the Asus baseline wasn't actually too far off. Like, it's a little bit off. And sometimes it was kind of weird. Uh, but the theory that I've got there is that the baseline runs the voltage a bit too high. And that means that you're more likely to actually hit the 250 watt power limit, the 253 watt power limit, and therefore slow down, and therefore have the reduced performance. Because ideally, ideally, your core clocks actually haven't changed, but, uh, we all know that. I, I think they all run 100 megahertz higher, which is like a little tiny percent difference. But on the Gigabyte board, which has the weirdly low power settings, it also has weirdly high voltage. And so, you know, there's, there's no hope. That thing is going to be running with increased power draw for the same work, which means it's gonna, you know, hit the power limit and then run worse. That's, that's just naturally gonna happen. What game- that's right, I was gonna say game is Nexus, wrong side. What Hardware Unbox fails to then mention is what actually is the power draw on the baseline profiles. Because my hunch is that the increased voltage the baselines are running at means they're going to run with more power at the same workloads. So even though the conclusion is, yeah, it's more stable, but it runs worse, it's like, no, the, 
point two, it might be running with a higher power, which is silly, and we should really reconsider what on earth is going on here if the solution is to run with the settings so terribly. Is this Intel's fault? Maybe a little bit. Your stock settings really shouldn't suck. They, I think there's a degree of, they could do okay without sucking, and they might be sucking right now. So, uh, and on top of that, Gigabyte just seems to have gotten it very wrong, because that is clearly not the spec. That's, that's not the power limits, we all know that. Um, so, I think that's, that's worth, you know, looking into. Um, for the, uh, but yeah, like, I, I feel like a bit of just knowing what these settings do, and what you can do as a person to, you know, or as an owner of these, of a motherboard and a processor, to actually make your experience better. Like, we should really just, just do that, like, I don't know what's going on there. Um, at the end of the video, they, uh, they sort of do mention that it's like, you know, it is Intel's problem because, uh, here's an Intel statement where they say running with unlimited power is technically within Intel spec. To which I'm like, I guess, maybe, but, like, you're the one who reached out to someone to, like, figure that one out. Like, I never thought Intel was, like, encouraging unlimited power. I know they let it happen. That doesn't mean, like... That, the, that you throw out their spec, it just means that there's weirdly conflicting info. So why don't I just run either one? If, I, if I'm having no problems with unlimited, then that's fine. If I'm, having no pr if I'm having problems, I'll go with the other spec. Like, okay, sure. Or I can toy around with some settings. Like, that should really be the conclusion. Not, you know, all this stuff is like terrible and Intel is terrible and no one should ever buy Intel, yada yada yada. Because, Shoe is on the other foot. If uh, AMD's motherboards were, let's say, providing too much voltage to a processor, um, and especially the ones that are a bit sensitive to higher voltage, and then suddenly, you know, like a part of them overheats and bubbles and sort of break contact, and suddenly the processor and maybe the motherboard uh, have to be replaced, um, you know, we wouldn't be blaming AMD exclusively for a problem like that, but we definitely say, hey, maybe there's something going on in that contract. Um, and stuff like this happens, and also stuff like this, we don't know what's the, like, you know, what's the actual widespread impact yet. We still have no clue. There's been no proper survey, the best we've, we've had is Reddit. Which isn't, isn't that weird? Like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying Reddit has no value, but Reddit has definitely dropped in its value. I think a lot of people who traditionally would meme on Reddit have suddenly switched to memeing on exclusively Twitter, and it's like Twitter is the site where anything happens now, um, in terms of like, a movement or a communication of something, um, I don't know, it's, it's a bit weird, so I don't know, I don't take much of Reddit's opinions anymore, but I don't know, maybe that's just me, um, and obviously of course different Reddits will have different kinds of cultures, so there might be one subreddit where it's like, oh, it's actually, you know, that much more level-headed. Um, certainly people on Reddit Intel have taken a bit of the, you know, defense, you know, against this. And some of it is rightly so, and some of it is like, uh, not as much, but... Like, I think we can, we can definitely spot that the problem is there, but I also do agree that, you know, this can be fixed. And, and certainly, I think this is like, oh sorry, this can be remedied. And potentially, this actually might be a non-issue. Who knows? Um, I will say anecdotally, as a 13900KF owner, yes, my 13900KF was a little temperamental with the out-of-the-box settings. Whatever the case, an out-of-the-box experience that doesn't work is sort of bad. It, it really, like, that, that should be treated, that should be handled. Time to get all five Dragoobies. Um, like, out-of-the-box should always work. That I really sh shouldn't not be the case. Uh, what really should be happening is they should tone down the out of the box settings to be a little bit, you know, stable. And then you toy around with it a bit better. Because the idea is that if your processor doesn't work, you hit load defaults and then it works. When it doesn't work when you loaded the defaults, it makes that option useless. And for the people who actually have no idea what's going on, now they have nothing to fall back on. That, like, there's certainly merit to be had to have that. 
what I do want, though, is that, like, I don't want the defaults to necessarily be stupid and worthless in the sense of, like, you know, clearly these processes can run better than the spec, so I'm perfectly fine with them running better than the spec. What they need to be is just stable. And to some degree, I guess, you know, maybe these processes do run too aggressive, and to some degree, maybe my processor hasn't exhibited these problems because I've never run it that aggressively. Oh, we've got the bone room. Maybe that is the thing. So I guess, yeah, if, you're, if your processor, maybe it has degraded, I don't know, but the mystic nut. Point is, uh, wrap this all up. This is not, I'm, I'm not saying it's an overstatement, but it is certainly, like, excessive. Because it's like, the solution is right there. And you have the, you know, the platform to tell your audience that there is just a better way of doing it. And you're not, for some reason, you're just rolling in the controversy. Come on guys, you can do that, it's fine. So, I don't know, that's just me, that's my two cents. My Jay's two cents, if you will. I have not watched his opinion if he said anything about it. I think he actually did, but... I think he just literally- he did this- I think he said something before the baseline specs came out, and all he did was he set the power limit. And also, he didn't- also, by the way, both, um... Both, uh, Jay and, uh, Hardware Unbox do not have m malfunctioning processes. Or at least haven't experienced any, like, instability in anything they've done. So all they're saying is sort of perspective. Um, it's fine, it's just, you know, that should be made clear, that, like, whatever problem exists, they haven't actually tested where that limit is. Um, it, and also for me, I've not, I don't play too many newer games. A lot of my games are kind of, like, slightly older ones, but I just run them at, like, 4K, so <laughs> that's, that's the excess that I've got there. Um, I do, I do a bit of productivity stuff, so that's also the justification of the processor, like, it's very nice for my stupid projects that are right. Um, so here we go. This is a five-floor dungeon, so this might actually have to take several goes. The chest was a trap! Oh, what the heck? It just, just poisoned me as well, no one else. What the heck? That's not very nice. So I think this room doesn't have anything in it. This is just a weird dead end there. And then there's a mystical staircase. Ooh. What the heck? The two two separate gold walks are not together. They're just two separate ones, you know, as you do. We're in this awkward point where it's like, I can't rely exclusively on heal more because I don't heal enough to really, like, use a ton of it, but if I take two fairly even hits, I, I you know, Nana's dead, basically, so it's like, eh. <laughs> Somewhere in between. I like how it, this is just kind of going through dungeon. You know, <laughs> like, like, we're definitely seeing more stuff, but, uh... You know, the, the process hasn't changed the stream. So it's going around, we'll get more, more goodies. I think we do get the fifth crest in this uh, dungeon, though. Hey, Art's oh, got another level. Very nice. Oh, and he's got Firebane. Very nice. It's a strong one. It's a good one. So I think if we head to this staircase... Oh, I should have asked that guy a thing. Hi there. A long time ago, a volcano exploded at the bottom of the sea. That's how this cave is said to be made. But woo, this heat's unbearable. So where does this lead? To another staircase, oh my gosh. Uh, I think this just leads to like, the other like, side of the dungeon. There might be some, some goodies around, but, uh, oh boy. Okay, so where are we now? We're in... 
We've got some mummies, everyone likes mummies. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, that's my rant. Again, we'll see more about about this, but... Um, yeah, oh yeah, sorry, so I don't play a ton of the newer games, but... I have played the Talos Principle 2, which is an Unreal 5 game, and it was sort of weirdly unoptimized. But, whatever settings I have with my computer, I have not... It's not unstable. It was like, that game ran fine, it never crashed. My only, like, technical issue I had with it is that the game doesn't detect uh, any secondary controllers, it only ever spots the first one. That's just a game problem, that's not an Intel processor problem, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, but it seemed fine for the most part, so... Like... It's anecdotal, I'm, I, I'm not gonna say every single game is, like, fine because the Talos Principle was fine, but... Like... I don't know what to... what to say otherwise. Uh, okay, where are we going? Everyone likes a good old Sable Lion. Actually, I think we've won it into a dead end. I think this is, like, exclusively, it's a lava pit and there's nothing else here. You know, the best dungeon design, the one where you just get, like, lost in a dead end. Nice! Also the best kind of... <laughs> the best kind of dungeon where, uh... Someone just cops a little bit too much damage. Okay, well, I guess we, we back out, we leave the way I came in. I'll just try and play as many things, but I'll probably get ripped, and then I'll lose all my money again. Which is a bit of a shame, I really should have put that in, in a, a bit. And the worst part is that, like, I'm very certain the repel is not gonna work. Like it should. But nothing happened. Oh, okay, that, that really sells it then. I might be able to get out, we'll see. So I think if we head in here, we've got, like, a... a chest that we can capitalize on a little bit. Wizard ring, wow! I think that's just, yeah, it's just one damage to lava, which is bearable. Uh, uh, I could probably deal with this encounter, actually. The drag goopy never, never hits that hard, so. Uh. But yeah, uh, so out of the frying pan and into the fire when it comes to another, I guess, controversy. Is this a controversy? I don't know. But, um, there's a certain PS5 game that just came out, and a lot of my timeline is going on about a, a, a crazy uh, culture war, as they describe, uh, where basically this game, uh, which <laughs> I'm not mentioning it by name because I think effectively it doesn't matter like, what this game is. I mean... Someone could just go, what's the PS5 exclusive that came, up, came out around this time? And you'll find what I mean. But, effectively, the discussion is all about how bits of the character... Well, first of all, the, it, was, it was all about how gratuitous this character was. She would flaunt her um, body in uh, very overly sexualized ways, and that's bad. And then... At some point, it, it became like, oh, this is like, you know, developers saying F you to, like, uh, cancel culture. I don't know what, what the what is going on here, but okay. Um, and then suddenly, very close to release, uh, some of the game was changed. Like, as in, the disc that was shipped, and if you don't update anything, you can play. 
and you'll spot some things that were changed in an immediate day one patch. And, and some people actually say it's stealth patch, and I don't know if it actually is, but um, it's certainly... Yeah, let's see if we can find, like, a better place to, to bank. I think, actually, we could probably just go to the starting town, and we can actually save there as well. Unless the escape route is entirely blocked off and I get killed by Vampirus. Um, but, uh, yeah, so now the shoe's on the other foot where suddenly now the game is, uh, well, some people are decrying that the game has been ruined, or at least deeply affected in some way. I won't mischaracterize them and saying, like, the game is ruined and they'll never, you know, they'll never recover. It's more just like, you know, this is a terrible action. And, uh, I, there's a lot of responses on Twitter going like, oh, how... Like, why are you getting mad over, like, this one little thing? And it's like, okay, okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta chat. So, number one, uh, a lot of people on Twitter don't exist. Uh, or, or rather, their opinion doesn't really exist. They are sort of shouting at, or rather, stoking the flames to get a reaction. And to sometimes drive some advertiser money that ends up in their pocket because they got Twitter blues. Are you not a church? I swear, I s hold on, was there not a church in the starting town? I feel like I clarified this last week and I, I've just completely forgotten. Um, so, so yeah, so number one, most people on Twitter don't exist. Like, I, I'm, I'm not gonna make a big point of people getting mad over a thing because it's just like, it's, it's Twitter, like, at the end of the day, ultimately, if you still enjoy the thing, don't let people on the internet ruin it for you. Um, they can definitely bring some things up to light and you might go, yeah, that kind of sucks. But like, games are complex. Games have a lot of stuff in them and it's very easy to, like, still enjoy something, or to not like something, despite having the opposite opinion about some things. Um, there are some games where I think they are absolutely terrible, but I like some bits of them. Um, there are some games that I think are very good, but I really hated some bits about it. And I beat, <laughs> for reference, I beat Chrono Cross! I finally did it, guys! I finally finished another JRPG! So that, that's all good. Uh, but Chrono Cross was an example of one where there are some things where I'm like, I just did not like that thing. That was just terrible. I don't think the, um, the multiple, uh, the multiple characters, like the, the crazy amount of characters in that game really worked the best. It just didn't click for me, really. Um, but on the flip side, it's like, yeah, you know, like, I kind of like the gameplay for trying something different. I liked the, um... You know, the graphics and the presentation and the music was pretty good. Um, the story was interesting. I didn't really like how it linked into Chrono Trigger. It really didn't need to. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I liked it. I liked it. It definitely deserves a place in the PS1 JRPG bubble. Uh, so definitely worth a check. Um, but definitely, I don't know if I would call it a masterpiece. I think Chrono Trigger was certainly the... The better game in my eyes, but I don't know. I'm not. I. I like if, if I dare call it overrated, it's only because it's overrated as a 10 out of 10 game. I think it is certainly a bit less than that, but it's not a. It's not a bad game. It's just. I don't know. <laughs> is that a controversial take? Maybe it could be shorter. Having to fight six dragons near the end of the game is just like man. That's just padding. It's just like. And also some of the obscure things, like, characters which seem optional are suddenly now just really required. You needed to get them to do a thing in order to, like, continue on and have something happen. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, so back to the other game. Um, the... Like... Yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you enjoy the game or don't enjoy the game, don't let people you know, bully you into enjoying it or not enjoying it because of this one thing that they want to really fight over. That being said, the thing that they're fighting over 
I think is actually pretty apt, which is uh, this degree of video game censorship. Now, censorship has always existed in uh, all media, basically, and pretty much it's as straightforward as the creator wants to do a thing and someone in the chain says you will never be- you won't be able to publish the, the, the thing or, or distribute or whatever unless you change some component of your work to, you know, to be more acceptable or because some- I don't know, because of something. That is censorship. Some of it is like people don't really fight over, like I don't think, you know, after, you know, certain tragic events and suddenly people are a little more sensitive and they might, oh, I might change that. Um, while it is censorship, it is still, you know, they're changing it for, a, uh, I guess, a reason that I think people can spot a little more. Um, I think there's also a degree of changing something be for censorship is specifically because of the anticipated reaction to it. If it was, for example, we changed this outfit because, uh, like, we wanted to pull off this animation and it just looked really weird when you had this, uh, you know, outfit on, so we changed that outfit to fit better with the animation. I think people would probably say that's not censorship, um, because it's like, well, what, why is it being changed? Oh, it's not because it's too risque or stuff like that, it's just literally a technical aspect. Um, so I think people are more accepting of that, although certainly um, I think one could make the case of, you know, I liked the old design better. Maybe you could still say that. Um, but certainly it's like, yeah, if it's like, hey, uh, Sony, you know, decides to say, hey, yes, this game will sell better if uh, you're, you know, if you don't have too many clothes. Oh, sorry, if you have, t if, you, if you put on an extra layer just here and here. Um, and that technically is censorship. Now this, I think, people have a point when they say Stellar Blade was always going to be a mature rated game. It's clearly got lots of blood and, you know, mature themes and whatever. Um, so it clearly was going to be a mature game. Why did they need to censor the, or why did they need to change the outfit just to cover up a bit more skin? And that is a fair point. I think... If your game is, like, it's clearly not, you know, just gonna, like, stoke the flames, you know what I mean? Like, there are some games, like, um, I think Hatred's a classic example, where it's like, that is literally there just to be, like, hilariously, like, offensive. And to some degree, here am I talking about Hatred, so maybe it worked, maybe that's the point. Um, and it's not to say that Hatred is a game that doesn't deserve any attention or what it, like, I, you know, until I play it, I can't tell you if that's the case. Um, I don't think the reception was amazing for that game, or really that good, but, uh, you know. I, I it, it, it deserves to be an example of one where we do, like, go, hey, how, how far is too far? And, uh, you know, in order to have too far, something's gotta be too far, you know what I mean? Like, like, we gotta have a limit. <laughs> we gotta- we gotta find where we feel too far is. That's- that's perfectly fine. Um... Wow! Can you- can you drive any slower outside? Oh my gosh. Um... But, uh... But, yeah, so... Um... So... The real reason of why this, uh... You know, th this outfit was, uh, changed... I don't think we'll ever know. Um, there's certainly going to be non-disclosures between the developer and the director and stuff, and uh, Sony publishing. Uh, Sony clearly wants something out of it. There's a reason why they changed it. Um, all we're really doing is inferring a reason, and generally this reason has been kind of consistent. There's been multiple Sony properties in the past that have kind of done this. Um, I think a uh, classic, like, there's a bunch of games that are, like, weirdly uncensored on the Switch, but they're censored on, um, on a, a Sony platform for some reason, which is, is like, kind of curious. I think, like, some of the, um, what is it, the Sanran Kagura games have, like, this going on? It's a little weird. It's like, oh, really? Really? Why is, like, Nintendo's usually been the prudish one, and it's like, eh, Nintendo's just cool with it, it's fine. Uh, 
but the, um, yeah, the, like, I think the problem is there, though, where, like, the creator clearly wanted something, or at least the creator, or, or whoever actually made the art asset, is okay with, you know, this one thing, and someone down the line changed it for some reason, you know, I think it is fair to question why that was the case, and if it was for a non-technical, you know, case, I'm glad that I sometimes didn't, didn't, uh, I haven't even gone, <laughs> like, I just got to the second floor, and now it's like, yep, oh, it's dead, can't keep going. Do I have anything that I can, like, give art to, like, be a bit more defensive? He's got the- does he, he's got the magic armor on, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he does. Oh, level 20, very nice. Oh my gosh, 13 health, woo! But yeah, hold on, so he's got the... Yeah, he's got the- the evade cloak. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Gotta back up, gotta... <laughs> this is the dungeon I'll never get to the end of, I'll tell ya. That was a lot of health to just, like, gain on one level, wasn't it? Yeah, it's weirdly high- oh my gosh, by the way. The real level where we cop it. Oh, snap, I just fled from one. For once. Finally. Um... Yeah, I think uh, the main character actually gains, like, quite a bunch of health at this time. Like, he ends at level 50 with 240 health. I'm not looking right down, sorry. Um... But it's like, he's... And, and also, that's without, uh, some seeds. I'm pretty sure I've used a seed on him, so he's got a little more health than the typical main character. Um... So I think the trick, by the way, is that we just sail directly north, and we'll get to the, the town. Uh, I think the other characters sort of gain a ton of health around level 20 as well, so maybe they'll all feel a bit around here, but... Oh, I'll never leave, though. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that the, the criticism of Sony, and, and definitely wanting to find out why, is valid. People should really, you know, have a reason provided to them. And if it is purely because of censorship reasons, then the question becomes, why? Because, obviously, like, if this is for an age rating, the question is, okay, well, which age rating? And why on earth do they want this? And perhaps, could the outfit just be region-specific, rather than blocking it off in all countries? You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh... Okay, well, I'm a little bit off, but close enough. The worst part as well is that, like, with the evade armor, it's like, I, I am nowhere near buying, um, like, the best armor. The 65,000 gold armor. Which I think it's worth buying one of those, because, um, then the, uh... Then the, the princess can wield one. Or alternatively, the prince of Canic. Like, in theory, both of them can equip both at 65,000 gold armor, and also there's a, there's a special one later on. But, uh... You know, there's only gonna be one of that one, so you might as well get one of the, bet the other one. expensive, I'll tell you that. And also there's like other other things you can get. So for example, I'm pretty sure I've got the um the steel shield still on on uh, the main character. I'm using hold on, am I using a leather shield? Maybe that's the problem. 
That's the problem, I'm just dedicated still leather shield when really I could just be buying them. No, oh, that's the problem. That was the problem the whole time. What's his helmet as well? Oh, he doesn't have a helmet because... That helmet is magic. It's a rare draw. And you can buy it later as well, but... <laughs> oh, dang it. So, yeah. So anyway, so the criticism is valid, um, I think. And people decrying that it's like, oh, why do you care about this one thing? The problem is not that they changed... Sorry, the problem is not the outfit itself. The problem is that stuff gets changed. And that really should be addressed, and someone should bring that up, and it's like, why is this happening? Um, and this kind of stuff happens with not just this game, and that's why, you know, like, I guess... It's, it's worth bringing up every single time, because the reason why something gets censored... If it's not for the age rating, what is it for? Is it is it to push? Is it to push an agenda? I don't know. I think that's kind of weird. Um, my honest opinion is I think it's actually like controversy baiting from Sony's end on this one, and to some degree, it it probably has worked. This game I don't think would have done as well had it not been outlandishly like sexy, if you know what I mean. And... And also, just to, just to stoke the flames a bit more, let's change it just that little bit where people probably won't call it not sexy, but they'll definitely, you know, if they were paying attention, then it's like, oh, you know, the Sony censored something, and, you know, you got, like, who's the guy? Grums on Twitter? Like, he's, he's got a petition, a free sell of like, oh my, oh my gosh, man, like, okay. Like, I mean, you know, I I do want to send the message of censoring stuff is bad, but I don't think Sony cares because Sony's just doing this to sell more more game. That club is gonna hog up my inventory, by the way. So I, I'm I've I've got a herb, a warp wing. This is just. <laughs> Man, this place is a while away, ain't it? Yeah, I was like, I was like, do I check the map? I'm like, nah, I didn't sail past it. Alright, hopefully we can live some fights without necessarily dying, but... I don't know, if, if I, if I cop it, like, way outside of my control, then... Ugh, I guess. Like, the Firebane is very annoying. Grabupi. Grabupi. But yeah, I should actually get that one shield, because then the shield, when you use it, it casts heal more. So, it's like... I don't have to worry about barely healing people. Oh my gosh, so many of them, so many gr Gragoopies. They keep spreading. Oh my gosh, we're up to Gragoopy G. Don't do this to me, don't give me too many Gragoopies. A lot of them are not getting hit by the bolts though, so it's just like, eh. And the amount of damage is all over the place, but sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think Sony is just going, hey, controversy sells, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna run it, we're just gonna ride controversy. Um, is that kind of scummy? Um, yes. But I'm not gonna pin it on them just yet, because that is, like, it is conspiracy. It is, it is proper, I have to, like, believe that there's an intention to do that. But certainly, if that was the plan, it's worked quite often. Like, you know, it makes sense they do it, I guess. And to that, I'm like, man, you know, it kind of sucks that there's no way to support a developer for making a game that you want, and to also tell the company that published it, hey, don't do thing. Don't do that. I don't like that. Um, and that's, again, another, another problem with the big games. It's very hard to 
signal what actually you liked about it and what you didn't. Um, because there's always this going on. There's always, like, there's so many things going on. Uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto is always a classic. It was like, a bunch of people will get outraged and then it's like, oh, it still kind of sells well because it's just controversial. That's what it is. I'm not saying exclusive exclusively controversial games always sell well, because it's like, clearly I mentioned Hatred, which no one played. Um, but, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of just controversy baiting, I, I think it's going on. Um, I think, <laughs> I think Grums is going a bit too far, I don't know, like, I, I agree in principle, I just don't think Stellar Blade is really, like, the actual poster child of censorship, because it's such a minor change. Like, I know the, the what they what they had was, um, uh, in one other part, and, and it seems that these are kind of, like, there's only three bits that people are really mentioning. One is, uh, this one costume has a bit more skin, maybe a couple of costumes, it's, sorry, a bit less skin, a couple of costumes are like that. Um, that happens a lot in different games, so I completely understand, you know, calling this one up as an example of that. Another one of them is, uh, in one cutscene, uh, the main character gets a lot of blood on her from the enemy or demon thing or whatever. I don't know what the game's about. I don't really know. I don't have a PS5. This is, I'm, this is why I'm not making it, like, my, uh, my, uh, my cultural fight to try and defend this game from all the people who are, like, decrying out. It's like, it's a game... I don't know, maybe. I, d I don't have any reason to criticize it for what it is, like, I'll definitely say that, but... I also don't really have a lot of grounds to defend it, I guess. Um... But, uh, yeah, in this one scene she's got a lot of blood on her in a pre-release trailer? Or... In the ver actually, it's in the version 1, like the on-disc version 1, and uh, in, in the patch it's, it's gone. Again, maybe it's technical, but also maybe maybe it is censorship, I don't know. This one's a bit interesting, because I guess it's a blood thing, so uh, that that le lends credence more to the, like, to the, the argument that this is a, um, this is a censorship thing, but I don't know yet. Um, we gotta trudge through here, by the way. Because, uh, this staircase is secretly the magical one you want to go- go down. It's got, a uh, bunch of staircases. Oh my gosh. Wow! That was within one turn, by the way. Maybe I do need to go get the... You know what, actually? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna fling myself... ...at all these enemies. Because it's, it's... it takes so long to leave. You know what I mean? But it's like, I can defeat the enemies, get a bit of gold... Like, real talk, if I die, no biggie, right? I lose half my money... That's like, just a thousand, and then I can still pay for the recovery, because I basically get that amount from one enemy. Nah, nice, why do I poisoned again? Like, we might as well just keep pushing, because, uh, I've been in this dungeon for like 30 minutes, and it's like, I'm not getting very far. Also, a Strussy? Oh. This is gonna get kind of annoying, isn't it? Uh, might as well pass the moon shard to Nana. Oh my gosh. I stuff it, she drops the herb. Why am I holding- I'm holding on to like an iron helmet. Hold on, I am holding on to a steel shield. Hold on, yeah, what on earth? Someone's probably been spotting that. And it's like, why am I still holding on to a steel shield and I've not given it to Art and equipped it? Yes, I am very sorry. Oh, because he's unable to hold the steel shield. Oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, back up, back up. I thought he could equip the steel shield. I don't know, what's going on there? 
It's not particularly great though, I'll tell you that. But, ah well. So now I can pick up a straw seed. And then use that straw seed on myself, because that's the only thing I'm doing. <laughs> you know, attacking. Gotta increase that straw. And down we go. And we'll just try to win. We'll try to try to defeat everything. These saber lines are gonna kick my butt though, I'll tell ya. I would definitely say, like, I have spotted the cracks in Dragon Quest 2 a bit more. This is definitely one where, you know, I enjoy Dragon Quest 2, but I don't love Dragon Quest 2 in the same way as the first game. Because Dragon Quest 2, I think, yeah, at, in this dungeon, this is a bit more frustrating. Because it's like, I don't have the tools and the capability to really do better until I just get a very, very arbitrary amount of money. So I'm just gonna cop it at some point. So once you get to this uh, about this part of the floor, we'll see how we go. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna either get mauled or I run oh I run away. At this part of the floor, we have a lot of downward staircases. Some of them lead onwards, and some of them don't. So it's like where do you go? Um, interestingly, I think this. Uh, this staircase, the f the very first one, is actually okay. I think this leads into a, a bit of a weird corridor here. Um, and there's definitely a lot of, like, upstairs staircases here. But if I can just make it over to here... And I get a, an amulet, which I definitely needed another one of. Um, and then, uh... Whew, where do we go? Where do we go? Um... There's a, uh... Let's see, I think we go to... All the way over on the left. But, I don't have enough health for that, so... <laughs> you died? How could you have died? You just bring him back, start again. Revive the Nana! We're actually almost at the end of the dungeon as well, but, uh... You gotta, you gotta keep it going. You gotta keep it going. I actually kinda like how straightforward it is once you know where you're going, but, uh... Keep it going, keep it going. I'm going to the end because I'm pretty sure our main character is, uh... Oh, is that full health? Actually, is everyone at full health? No, no in for me, I guess. So, yeah, hold on, so I've got the leather shield. Oh, it's the pa- okay, yeah, the steel shield he can't equip, so the power shield. I might as well sell... Well, I'm not gonna pick up anything else in that dungeon, so we can, we can reevaluate it when I'm done. Across we go, and out again, into the wilderness. Oh well, so, I don't know. I, I think controversy is just for controversy's sake. I don't actually think there's really anything um, to be gained by just winning it in this game. Uh, certainly, uh... <laughs> Certainly, I, I agree that, yes, the censorship sucks, but I also feel like this is perhaps just manipulation. Like, we're meant to be causing an uproar because it sells this game more. And that's the reason why I've sort of not mentioned it. Um, just because I think the game should be done well, or rather, the game should be mentioned about the game itself, about its strengths, about its weaknesses, about its visual design, about its soundtrack, all this stuff. That should really be what the conversation about this game is. But it seems that the only thing I've ever actually heard about this game is just oh, the outfits and stuff. And that might just be the circles that I, you know, pay attention to. But, like, 
that that's my problem is like ah man you know like uh, like I I really not not that I don't care about censorship but that I really want this game to shine because of what the game does and I'm really not getting I, I like how I look away from moments like hey. I'm really not seeing that with my boards and and and, the, and my timelines. Um, so ultimately, it's like this this game's just you know it's the football in our game of yelling at a thing. Uh, certainly, it deserves you know at least some answers, some you know explanations. Why is why it has something been changed? But is it the is it the be all end all? Uh, I don't know. Mm, probably not. Also, hold on. Oh, nice. I was gonna say, is this um? Because this is a uh, this is the the town as well. I'm pretty sure. Can you save here? Because this would probably save me a fair bit of effort instead of sailing all the way north all the time. I was gonna say as well. Is this shallow water? Can you actually use the the moon shard on it? No, not this one. Dang it! Well, at, at least sailing in the proper way is uh, actually also fine. So, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. But I I think that's that's. That's the angle it's at, so I don't think there's much to say about it. Um, you know what game does deserve a bit of criticism and a bit of controversy, though? Uh, Escape from Tarkov. This is a game that I have not played because it's a early access game, which is just never for me. Uh, it's also a, I guess, it's a live service game. It's it's not it's not quite like other live service games, but it is one where it's like it's constantly changing, it's constantly evolving in various ways. Um, I guess I shouldn't really call it a live service game, but I'd definitely say it's a game as a service where... How do I say it? Like, it's got seasons and it's got things that, you know, change here and there. Yeah, none of these, uh, because this isn't a place with uh, better stuff, but might as well sell. Yeah, might as well sell the things that I don't care about. So first of all, we've got some warp wings, which I don't really need. I'll on to those wizard rings for the moment, because you never know. In the club, I really don't need that. And you have exclusively goodies, and you've got the iron helmet, which no one's going to use. Or alternatively, I just sold that accidentally, I need to buy another one, whoops. The steel shield, which no one's going to use. And the amulet, which everyone's got one, so that's fine. Plenty of money, plenty of space. And this uh, this would be the... Which one's this? This is the... Oh, the fortune teller. You just like fortune telling? That is fine. <laughs> yeah, so did this place have a save? That'd be a church, which I guess is convenient. It's got an inn. But did it ever have a save? King save. Let's just double check that. Hi there, King. He does. I'm a dumbie. This would be yeah. This would make my life a little easier with this dungeon. But we're probably pretty close to the end of this dungeon anyway, so we'll see. And there's trees. We're nearly done with the end of the game, though. But I guess there's a there's a big question of um, how 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 what level do I need to be? How much experience do I need? 
Because uh, remember, in order to get to the max level, you basically need a million experience. And even though I'm getting, yeah, 200 off an encounter, and it'll keep going up a bit. And there's also the, um, the metal slimes, if they ever show up in... There's definitely a place later on where they do appear. Um, and that'll definitely expedite that a fair bit, but... Um, the goal isn't necessarily end level, um, but it is just to, I guess, uh, be strong enough to beat the end of the game. I remember there being a very big, like, wall on just like, you know, I'm throwing myself at this dungeon, but I'm, I'm, I'm making progress. The bit that's taking its time is I'm going around and picking up chests. And, uh, there's just not quite enough resource- well, there's not quite enough defense on, a. Uh, on the Prince of Canic or the Princess of Moonbrook to really make that happen. The main character gets all this cool stuff right now, and then everyone else is like, eh, I can't equip anything. I guess that's kind of a, uh, that's a bit of a gripe of this one. It's like, man, the main character, despite not being able to cast spells, is really good because the time to kill is a bit too fast. People die really quickly, and especially when you get encounters like this, where it's like, there are six enemies. There are six opportunities for someone to hit me, and it's very possible that someone can just insta-kill me. It... that can just easily happen. And they both hit art as well, which is very nice. Gragoopy. I love the Gragoopy name though, it's so good. But, uh, yeah. well, I'll be Chrono Cross, so at least that's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it was certainly a, a good, a good time, a good experience. Um, interestingly as well, just like Xenogears, it's like, eh, the second disc is, uh, very short. Um, unlike Xenogears, it is not a drastic change in, um, presentation. Um, it's weird, it's like Xenogears is the first disc is tight. And honestly, if the story ended on Xenogears Disc 1 and a proper Xenogears 2 was made, I think people would have been very, very happy. Um, but also, maybe it is better to have had a conclusion than to never get one at all. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. If you if you get whatever came on Disc 2, just, you know, treat it as its own experience. Also, heal all! Oh my gosh! Also a Nana. Very interesting. Uh... I mean, she also had heal more, but it's just kind of nice to be able to spread the load a little bit. Oh, uh, you, gotta, you gotta have that crit. You gotta deal 123 damage. Uh, other than that, the only other game I've played, I haven't, I haven't beaten it all the way through, but the game I started playing was, uh, Guitar Hero 80s. I sort of called, um, I was going through doing full combos of Guitar Hero 2, uh, just on the Retro Achievement set, and I sort of called it at some point where I'm like, I've done enough of this, um, but it, <laughs> amazingly, I did 26 of the guitar charts, which, for 64 songs in the game, I don't know, I find that's impressive to me. Like, I, I don't expect myself to have done that many songs, but I'm happy. Um, and then, uh, I did, hold on, I have 83 total achievements, so I guess what's 83 minus 26? Is that... 83 minus 26 is... ends in 7... 57? 57 of the bass or rhythm charts? Most of them are easier. I will certainly say that. I am not, like, an absolute god when it comes to Guitar Hero. But, I I consider that to be, like, rather impressive. There are some songs that are just, like, so easy to choke in. Um, and I'm like, oh, I managed to, like, ooh, 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 is a meta ball. Can you manage to kill him? You will be honored with tons of experience. I, this is, this is very, very needed right now. Oh, we've hit him three times. 
No, come on. Come on. So, for reference, I mentioned the metal slime in the game, uh, by the way. The metal slime uh, has, in the original game, only gave 135 experience. In the remix, so in the Game Boy Color version, he gives 1,115, oh sorry, 1,015, not 1,100, just, just two ones, 1,015. Um, the liquid metal slime, or the metal babble, or the metabble, uh, in the original version gave 1,050, in this version gives 10,150. That is maybe two levels at this point. That would have been incredible had I have gotten him. But alas, he ran away, and I've still yet to defeat a metal slime. He also gives 255 gold, both in the NES version and in this version. I don't think many other Dragon Quest games, the metal slimes actually give you that much money. They're usually like, oh, I gave you the experience, you should be happy. And I would be if they hadn't run away. Um, I guess you're, what, what you're sort of playing at when they show up is uh, you're hoping that the, uh, the odds of getting a, uh, a crit roll up. I've never gotten a crit yet, so that's why I've never been able to kill one. But also, they're not showing up very much. Maybe they'll they'll show up a bit more later on. I'm actually amazed that it's in this dungeon, but I guess, you know, gotta be a place. Everyone's favorite terrain type. So I like how both of these, like, stairs here just lead to immediate dead ends. Uh, I should actually do a general heal as well because I know I've dropped a ton of health on the way. Not a ton of health, but enough that it'll probably have been a problem. Although they only gave me one save line, so maybe it's not the worst. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm 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 a god with Guitar Hero. What can I say? But uh, but no, I I'd love to to keep playing more Guitar Hero. So uh, the only other one uh, that's a main game with a retro achievement set is Guitar Hero 80s, a game that I've never played, and it's effectively a um, oh, there's a chest up there as well. I'm just wandering right past it, going, huh, huh, okay. Maybe we'll try and get it. Um, it's effectively a song pack for Guitar Hero 2, and weirdly, it came out three months ahead of Guitar Hero 3, which is not by Harmonix, it's by, uh, Neversoft. Um, but Guitar Hero 80s, uh, the licensing had shifted over to Activision, so Activision were the ones publishing this one. Um, cool, cool ability, by the way. Am I gonna cop it? Am I gonna cop it? Oh, close. Let's get Nana to do a heal, heal all on this one. Oh, actually, no, sorry. He oh, I, I, my brain was thinking that heals everyone. No, it's just a very good heal. Which I don't need a good heal, I need a, just a generally alright heal. Part of me wants to get that chest. Ah, oh, these saber lines are gonna kick my butt though. That's a, ugh. Which is so heavy hitting, you know? You know? Um, so I started Guitar Hero 80s. Guitar Hero 80s is. Mm, it's not clicking with me. Uh, and I know it's like, isn't it just more Guitar Hero 2? Yes. Um, maybe a bit. Too much so, like, I, I sort of wasn't expecting it to be entirely Guitar Hero 2, to the point of it's got the same venues, but they changed a little bit of their aesthetic. It has the same characters, but they changed a little bit of their aesthetic. It has the same menus, but they changed a little bit of their aesthetic. It has the same secondary band characters, except they didn't change any aesthetic. They're actually exactly the same as they were in Guitar Hero 2. Um, and the crowd as well. Um, and some of the production as well. <laughs> There's some of the covers sound like they are mid 2000s covers of 80s songs. You can sort of spot maybe just I don't know. There's a there's a there's a tinge there's a there's a tint to 
the analog vocals of, or maybe early digital vocals of uh, many 80s songs that is not there, and then you suddenly hear just a, a couple of the magic armor. Wow! Hold on, by the way. Wow! Could I have that a while ago? Couldn't I? Um, but also... Yeah, no, actually... Yeah, actually, hold on, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, it hold on to way too much. You can give me the mother seal. It's my seal. It's not your seal, it's my seal. Seriously, it's like... exact same thing in this game? This is this is no different. I thought I had a little bit more protection, right? Really? <laughs> okay. I like how I'd prefer stepping in like the one damage poop than to like try to encounter an enemy right now. <laughs> Kill, but, uh, <laughs> really didn't stop that much damage, did it? Um, but yeah, the song listing didn't really click with me, because uh, at least early on, maybe maybe it'll definitely get to me later on, because there's a lot of, um, you know, like the, there's a ton of songs that ended up in Guitar Hero Smash Hits, for example. Um, and a bunch are from the end of the of the Guitar Hero 80s catalog. They're not actually like a lot of the beginning songs are not in that one. Um, so what's the one like uh, uh, like uh, Electric Eye? That's in the second half. Um, Play with me. Gosh, I don't know. I think I Wanna Rock is the encore song of, of, um, like, tier three. So it's, like, almost halfway. Uh, but there's a bunch of songs at the beginning of the game where it's, like, they have, um, very just power chord choruses, and there's actually not a lot really going on. Uh, and, yeah, you can sort of feel it. You can sort of really feel it. Also, they really overcharted a bunch of the other songs. Um, sort of uh, a deep cut, but uh, people who, people who have played the game uh, may not be aware that uh, the song I Want Candy was in various pre-release demos. Um, covered, charted, uh, and they um, they took it out inexplicably of uh, the, uh, the final product. And uh, in order to actually have 30 songs, um, the Limousine song, uh, Because It's Midnight, which was supposed to actually be a bonus song, had to be promoted into the catalogue, but kind of exclusively there. So, it's it's weirdly out of place, that song. We are almost there. Let's, let's do another, you know, top up the healing right before I leave. There you go. We still gotta walk a bit, unless they're gonna never spawn an enemy here. Nope, they're gonna spawn enemies. Oh, these are some, these are some new guys. Metal Hunter. They're just gonna be mean on the last floor. I don't think the Evil Clan will be too bad though, because we've seen plenty of them. And a crit always helps. I'm glad I had the advantage on these guys. Have we fought Mega Knights yet? I don't think we have. Infidel, how dare you sully the fire chapel? You shall atone by becoming sacrifices to our gods! So, uh, oh my gosh, a boss battle. Uh, I don't know if these are two regular old evil clowns. We'll see in a moment when I kill this one right now. Okay, they're two regular evil clowns. Honestly, that is not actually the worst. <laughs> and casting heal all is sort of pointless. Oops, I just unequipped my armor. Or just, like, used it. 
but sure, I'll, I'll accept this outcome. How dare you hail Lord Hargon! <laughs> very nice, very nice. Wander up here and we finally get the evil statue? This is not quite the um the final crest, but uh that's the whole point. Is to uh is to get that. That's because we've got a little tiny town we've actually still not visited yet, so let's cast outside and we Oh my gosh, finally finished that dungeon. It's been an hour. But uh we're nearly we're nearly there with um really What's left of the game? So, back here we'll heal and save. Won't be the end of the stream just yet, we'll visit this new place. Unfortunately, no one even died. Wow! Maybe it was because I was aggressively healing this time. <laughs> That's the worst part as well, is like, as you get more and more experience, and your levels go up and your magic points go up a bit more, excessive healing is actually a bit more okay. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to the king. Um, but yeah, I'll keep playing Guitar Hero 80s, and it probably isn't, like, that bad, but it certainly is, um, in my eyes, maybe, the weakest Guitar Hero I've actually played. Um, and only 30 songs is certainly going to feel short. Um, even some of the later Guitar Heroes. Um, I have not played Aerosmith. That's the only other one I've actually never played. Um, and who knows, maybe they'll actually get a Retro Gym and set soon, because how much different to Guitar Hero 3 would it actually be? Who knows? Um, so our goal right now is to uh, sail to that one continent that I actually never did land at. Um, we're gonna have to fight all these guys all the time. Now this place did have a shrine. I did teleport to the shrine at one point, and uh... I guess you could, but I'm just gonna sail there. Like, there's no reason why, I'm, why I can't sail there, you know? No, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it going, um, but yeah, even like the weaker games, like honestly, I do think Guitar Hero Smash Hits is probably the weakest of like the Neversoft era of, and I know someone's going to say, oh, technically b Nox made it. Um, I know, I know. Uh, this is the continent, but I think you got to sail down a little bit in order to find the land that you can land at. Um, also I know technically Guitar Hero Van Halen was made by, um, the guys who made, uh, the, the BMX games, and famously, uh, BMX XXX, which is, uh, listen, if we're gonna talk about controversy games, that's, uh, that's a fun one. Oh boy, what a, what a wild way to, like, make a game. Just, you know. <laughs> People aren't buying our sports game, what do we do? <laughs> that. <laughs> so, uh, on the north of this continent, which takes a little bit to navigate to, there's a shrine. Basilisk. I don't actually think this place is, like, these aren't hard enemies, they're actually pretty okay. Um, but we've never actually visited- oh my gosh. Well that- okay, now we got a bit to, you know, to fight. <laughs> the poison is not very fun though, is it? It's really not. 
I mean, you could tell these encounters aren't actually that hard if the uh, experience is pretty, pretty tame. And the answer is, yeah, that's... It's not that bad, but it is tame. So, okay, let's antidote, because that's an expensive one if you don't. And here we are. Welcome to the town of... Is someone going to greet us? Here we go. The town of Miran, the city of water. It's a cool place. Stay clear of the cells, it's not safe. Well, we can use the jail key, bro. I never expected anyone to get in. You should be able to get to the Traveler's Gate over there. Where you end up is the only place that leads to the land of Rome. Nobody believed what I had to say, and this is how I ended up. But if you believe me, find a way out. Yeah, it's a bit of a painful space. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he, he's right. That's actually the only way to get to the end of the game, is from this town. Want to play the slot machine? No! You cannot. So, uh, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Ah, the weapons shop. There you go. So I think, does this guy sell... Oh, he sells the heal shield, which, uh... Might be worthwhile to get. It's a weird assortment. I think that there was, like, a better town elsewhere, but, uh... It's certainly worth, like, considering. I'm actually very tempted to, because I think there's nothing better for the Prince, so I might as well, because he can only equip the two. Um, and of course, you know, item shop is just the huge. And, uh, gold, let's take out 10,000. Oop, not save. Oop, not save. Take gold. Let's take out 10 grand. There you go. Back up. Buy the heal shield. I'm missing just that tiny little bit because I didn't take out the 500. Whoops. Whoops. I can navigate menus. It's so laggy, there's too many people on screen. Alright. <laughs> there you go. Buy uh, the heal shield. I've got too much on art, don't I? Yeah. So, how about I just... Uh... Give it a nana for a moment. Yeah, nana! <laughs> Actually, I should've just sold his current shield right off the bat. <laughs> and then given it to him, but okay. You can sell it. Leather shield? I'll give you that. I just realized as well, he's a... Uh... I've got, I've got the weapons mixed up where he's holding the, um, the Lotto shield because I've got the, oh, the Lotto sword because I've got the Dragon's pain on, um, on, uh, yeah, Bimbo. That's fun, ain't it? Uh, okay, heal shield, pass to art. We can now equip. It's so weird, weird that you got two of them, but now we can actually equip a good shield. Wow. Might as well sell the evade cloak as well while I'm at it. Oh. Wrong menu. Oh my gosh, I can navigate menus. I'm mashing the A button and I just mash like that one too many times. You know, you know how it do be? The evade clock's not that expensive, we can easily get another one. So. so that's all cool. Hello there, my man. A world leaf is said to be able to revive the dead. That is indeed true. That's usually how that works. We can head over to the end here where we can uh, have a sleep. There's actually a weird one. Slop Stanley, where is your other friend? Oh, he's ill? If so, we can tend to him while he recovers. Yeah, um, yeah, this is something that, like, happens. He's just gone. A message from the king. The sun seal is said to be in the flame shrine. But about Prince Art's curse. What am I to say to the king? Um, yeah, th this, this sometimes happens? I think Hargood has laid a curse on me. Fortunately, it affects me alone. I'm probably doomed. Go out without me. Um, yeah, he's actually almost permanently out of the game. Um, so, hold on, let's, uh, let's, there is a place to save. Is it this guy? Was well, your friend being struck down by Hagen's wrath? I don't know what to say. Thank you, I guess. You may now record your quest in the journal here. Life keeps getting more convenient. 
So we'll keep going on. Um, yeah, the, the fix for this is sort of annoyingly, you need to get a, uh, you know, a Leaf of Yggdrasil. Which means, yep, we gotta go all the way back to get a Leaf of Yggdrasil. It sometimes happens. Uh, I guess there's a retro achievement for it, so that's kind of fun. And the music's slightly different because you don't have a prince in your, uh, party. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a little annoying, ain't it? But, uh, at least it's not, uh, too far away. A little bit. <laughs> Still involves going across the ocean and fighting a bunch of encounters without him in the party, so that's fun. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess, what, is there another JRPG I should play? Maybe. Maybe. Um, there's certainly, um, some newer ones as well, but, I don't know, I don't know, I might play another older one, we'll see. I sort of picked up very briefly, I picked up a Pokemon Fire Red. Just started casually playing through that a little bit, um, so I should really like dedicate myself to going through that and, and really fleshing it out. Because it's been ages since I've actually played like Fire Red and Leaf Green. There's a part of me that sort of wants to also play it on stream, because even though I know I played Pokemon Blue, it's like, well, even though it's a remake and they sort of started, you know, going crazy ham with producing more and more Pokemon games, like, because it's like, when you think about it, it's like, okay, the original came out in 96, and then Gold Silver was 99, and Ruby Sapphire was 2003, and then it's like 2004 had Fire Red and Leaf Green, okay, and then 2007 had Diamond Pearl, and 2010 had uh, Hot Gold Soul Silver, and it's like, oh, you know, they were working on that in the middle, I guess. Am I, am I too far? I'm not far enough. I actually wonder if this would have been quicker if- Well, I guess it wouldn't have been quicker if I used the shrine, because I wouldn't have been on the same continent. With the boat. I would have needed to be over here and use the boat to... To get back, so... The music is still a vibe though, I'll tell you. Man, those enemies are not very strong. So here we are, the two trees chilling on their own. The wild leaf. <laughs> now we gotta walk all the way back. Oh, man, evil trees over here. We do kind of want to kick your butt over here. Wow. But granted, I guess this is close to the, the end of the game area, so... Peculiar dance, though. Right as I get, right as I get, you know, uh, all the goodies, he's got his cool armor that is the same, and he's got his cool shield that's actually cool. But yeah, I think we've sort of gone everywhere. Like, the only place left to go is the end dungeon. And before you say, didn't you only pick up four crests? The answer is yes, the fifth crest is weirdly on the path to the final, <laughs> like, place. And it's actually very weird. We're gonna, we're gonna have to pick it up and then backtrack because there's a place I need to go to outside of there that's got, once you've got all five crests. That's kind of annoying, I know. <laughs> Pretty good vibe, though. Chill theme. I like me a good chill theme. But it's not really chill, is it? It's grooving and funky. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Almost. Do 
Yeah, after Chrono Cross, there's a part of me that kind of wants a very, like, straightforward RPG. But also, you know one thing that actually got me kind of thinking? Chrono Cross doesn't have a mini game. Like, it's got some very small little mini games in it, but, like, it doesn't have its iconic mini game in the same way as, like, Final Fantasy VIII's got its card game and Xenogears has its weird, like, fighting game in the mechs and Final Fantasy VII has snowboarding. Um, and Pokemon's just got gambling, I guess. It's... it's strange. It, it came out at a time and just didn't... it doesn't have really a, a big mini game. It's got like a very brief gambling bit, I guess. Going across, but it's like, it's so brief and you only win like one prize by cheating. <laughs> uh, oh, where are we at? Did I not land at the right spot? Oh, I landed right at the bottom. Oh. <laughs> we'll get there, don't worry. Ah, regular goopy. Regular goopy. Very goopy. All my homies hate goopies. I'll never forgive them. healing properties you don't you don't take poison damage in the town so anyway come back over to the inn walk over them uh do we use the well oh, okay we got them in the in the party now technically so if we go to uh who's got the you got the world leaf if i use that on art boil the world leaf and place it in art's mouth Color returned to Art's face. Art's health was restored. Thanks, I'm all better. Sorry for all the trouble I put you through. Let's get going. There you go, back in the party. What a, what a... Kind of curious detour that you just sometimes have to do. You can answer to me. And then he gets poisoned again. All right, so now let's hit the save. This lovely save chap up here. So two, four, eight, nine, one, eight, one, two, six, six, one, eight. I mean, they're all kind of, kind of a bit away. It gets a few encounters. This person's also chilling in the flowers over here. There's a small island that lies in the far east. A single world tree grows there. The world tree is set to shed just one precious leaf at a time. Yes, yes. Which, granted, I guess that is very necessary to know if you just casually lose the prince. But, okay. So head over here. This guy is, uh, the church. And, uh, you're gonna need to... You're gonna need to kind of annoyingly safe passage this. Step guard. And we now step on the warp. I guess also that requires the jail key, so if you haven't done all your jail key stuff, then you're missing out a little bit. And, uh, annoyingly there's one spot here. To the path west. Sorry, to the west is the path that leads to Rome. But beware, youngsters, the path is not an easy one. Do not be overly anxious. I am a very anxious guy. And I think, can we just walk off, or...? You're just making me do this, are you? You're just, you're just like, ah, he's gotta, he's gotta step on more stuff. Try and find where the door is. It's just, it's, it's just down. It was just down. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Gee, don't hurt me. I'll tell you a secret. The water seal is in the town of Hamlin. That's yes, I've established that. Um. And yes, the poopy ground, just for a brief moment, is, is poopy for a moment. And there's a bit more poopy ground that you gotta... 
walk to actually do? Yes. Okay, this is this is getting silly, the amount of this happening. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a thing somewhere around here. But uh oh I gotta deal with the hunters. So this is the fun part. Now Art can just use the heal shield. I didn't select who I wanted to heal though. But okay. I've been though, it's nearly about to die. Good thing I can use my heal shield. That doesn't heal anyone else. That's a little worthless, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, it's actually, it's fine for art, but it's just like, man, I do wish that healed anyone else. Come on, man. Come on. Alright, so what you gotta do is, when you stand here, in particular, I know, right? Where does the game tell you this? Use the evil statue. It then causes this one mountain to become a big mountain, allowing you to enter the long-lost area. Oh, it's not lost, really. But, uh, this is the, uh, I guess... The cave? The cave to Rome? It's, uh, I mean, it's got clowns, I guess. I hope you like clowns. We're gonna see how far I get through this before I kinda go, yeah, good enough. Uh, I don't think there's anything on this first floor, but there are holes that will drop down into a basement floor, which is just gonna be a little annoying. It's not too bad. These knights aren't too bad. I don't know, I don't mind them. They give you good experience, though. There you go. Well, they're not really holes, they're just stairs. But they got more poopy floor, just in case. Just in case you miss the poopy floor. And we've got a chest down here. What's in the chest? The life seal? Good old life seal. Everyone likes a good old life seal. Where is it? Where is it? Is that a key item? Hold on. Where did I go? I don't know where on earth that just went, but okay. Okay. I'll just continue my life, I guess. We got- we got graveyard. We got graves. You know. Chill. Chill stuff. Um, I don't think there's really much about the floor below though, but uh, we've got a couple of staircases that can lead even more up. So how about let's go up one of them. Check it out, it's like evil eyes, but they're dark. So they're dark eyes. Magic yet again. There we go. That's actually some good experience. Dang, dude. Alright, so up this staircase, I think we get into, yeah, we get into this kind of weird room here. Where basically it like it just looks like it's a uh, forever looping. And it's kinda weird, but uh I think what you're meant to do, maybe, is uh you cross over. There's like two streams if I if I think of it. So you cross over and then this oh, it goes down again. Rules. Oh. 
Am I doing this right? I never know. <laughs> This is obviously downstairs. Okay, that's... Yeah. Because, yeah, for reference, if you try to go up here, you'll end up in a very similar room here. Uh, so... I guess we just <laughs> do the rounds, I guess. Two rooms, sorry, ah. Uh. Also, Oswags. That's an enemy name and a half, ain't it? But yeah, I don't know, I, I gotta find some, some more stuff to, to play, and certainly, um... Oh. They're gonna kinda hit a bit hard, aren't they? That's a bit painful. Good thing I've got a heal. <laughs> oh, I'm actually gonna heal everyone just on this turn, just in case. Let's take him out. Needed level up. Um, so I think actually, if we head over and you find the third pathway, and you just kind of keep going up, you keep going around, you'll find. There you go. You'll find the staircase that leads up, and that's really all that matters at that point. Um, Alright, so where are we at? We are somewhere off to the side, I think. So we're gonna need to wander maybe this way. We're gonna start coming, yeah, we're just gonna start coming across some real mean boys, like, you know, Orc King. The Gargoyle ain't too nice either, but I don't think he's got too much health. I don't think quarks are too bad, but maybe they are. Actually, didn't we see quarks like ages ago? I mean, they got health, so they can't be like that bad, right? Hey, there's another level. Very nice. Max HP rose by 6, and then the strength rose by 6, which is like, woo! Very nice. Oh, there's a staircase here. Wow, it's the same encounter. Second time, same as the first. Actually, I think there's a bunch of staircases that lead up in this area. I guess the question is, which way is the right way? Uh, oops. And the worst part as well is that there's, like, a specific chest you need to find, because of course, the crest is somewhere in here. Oops, trying to use evade. You know what's weird? I actually saw a review for Chrono Cross that complained that, like, sometimes they'd hit run away. Because in Chrono Cross, you always run away. If you ever attempt to run away, you will run away. Um, but the, the reason why running away is, like, so overpowered is because ultimately in Chrono Cross, you don't actually level up, really, off regular enemies. You have to defeat a boss in order to level up. 
Um, which is a very curious way of going about the whole, you know, preventing grinding, because it's like, you can't cheese it. You basically are stuck to whatever, you know, how many bosses you've beaten, which is just your progression through the game. I like that, it's cool, but... Uh, so, oh my gosh, where does this go? I think this leads to a chest. Yeah, it does. Nice. This is the magic hat. You know. You know, the magic hat. Actually, hold on, wait, do we have a magic hat? Who could equip the magic hat? Is that, uh, what I'm thinking, or is that just... Oh, yeah, hold on, yeah, I think this actually is important. Um, I'm gonna give this to... To Art, and he can, uh... Do, 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 do. Can he equip it? Yes, holy crap, there's a hat! This is a very rare hat. Maybe some enemies might drop it, but what actually is kind of cool is that it actually reduces the amount of magic points that everything costs. So suddenly now if I try to cast, like, well maybe not like this. Maybe in battle. Um, also it's 8 defense, so it adds up. But it's, it's a very nice find if you get it, so that's all good. Uh, let's keep exploring around. This is a, uh, this is, I mean, this is gonna be a dungeon. Oh my gosh. We got some level up, so we shouldn't get too caught out, maybe. I mean, the best part as well is, like, you can cast evac, and it's not too far to walk back, because... Also, if you die, I guess you're just there anyways, so... No more boat for a moment. <laughs> Bye bye, Orc King. But yeah, I th I think the curious part about playing more JRPGs is actually realizing like how many of them are actually wildly different. Like I appreciate it. I actually really like how they were all trying something quite new. And so and it's like yeah, like me who's played a bunch of Dragon Quest is like yeah, every Dragon Quest is kind of the same. They got cool encounters and cool places, but ultimately your combat actually remains fairly consistent between your Dragon Quests. Alright, back out here. I'm gonna head north, I think. We'll see if we're going the right way. I don't know. There's a chest over here. Is this one that we like? Money. Very nice. Whoa! Monsters! Monsters, it's stuck in my head. I'm trying to think of a word that I said. If only I had the means to. to deal more damage, you know? There's actually some, uh, as, as we keep going north, there's actually some, like, rooms with, uh, hidden, like, breakable floors. You know, it's, it's like Sky Pillar, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, they gotta fix some floors. But, uh, I think, maybe, I think there's actually one of these that has, uh, like, I guess a, uh, a, a proper item to find in there, so we'll try and keep the uh, keep our eyes peeled. Try and find something good. I'm not quite sure where specifically it is though. But if you're heading here. That's not a hit. That's not a breakable floor. That's just that's just floor texture. That doesn't count. I like this rock texture though. It's very just whoa, rock right there. 
That's still not a breakable floor, that's just, that's just the thing. Um, okay, where are we at now? Uh, oh, we're in the, uh, the, the fun maze of, oh, okay, the fun maze of the floor breaks out. This is a wild floor because I think legitimately, yeah, it's, it's a massive floor with some, like, real mean enemies. And it's just like, if you, if you, like, somehow get, I mean, you can't get too lost because uh, the stairs or the way to go are on the, um, on the corner, but it is just like, the amount of, like, space on this floor is like, ugh. Also, defense down is gonna be my death now. I think I can do a heal more. Hang on. The defense down might be the end of me, we'll see. Oh, 59! Oh! Oh, that's kind of rough. Oh my gosh, jeez. Yeah, this actually might be my death now, right here. Oh, especially when I can heal more. That's just rubbing it in, bro. That's just really rubbing it in. I'm gonna cop it. Oh. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> How strange, it was like... I didn't even think I was like that caught out, but like, nah, nah, this... This fight tr I did it! Wow. Alright, Nana, you're just gonna live. You're just gonna live for a bit. Just gonna wander all the way to the corner where you will then fall down. And if you fall down, this right here, this is thunder. Thunder. This is a. Uh, this is the the thunder sword. The thunder sword, which is actually like. Oh boy, I'm gonna really drop it. <laughs> Somehow flee from these. Um, it's actually an insanely good sword um, that only the main character can use. And in fact, actually, might be. The best sword in the game. There's actually one that's like a little harsher. Also kind of annoying where you basically have to like back out of the whole dungeon in order to even like even get out of here. But I actually might be able to live. I might be able to get out of here. Because now we're outside. I gotta cop some bad flooring and some outside enemies. Don't, don't lose it at the final stretch, Nana. You are doing so well. Cross that repel. When you think you're low level, but you're not. Wow, I actually made it. have to cop the flooring a little bit. Yeah, no, that that sword is like you're going to you're going to want that sword. Ouch, ouch, ouch. It does mean technically you don't have a dragon killer in your inventory anymore, but uh eh, it's fine. Uh let's use the uh the church to Provide a donation. 420. Hey, that was that was a week and a bit ago. <laughs> I don't even know anyone who like legitimately engages in, in that kind of stuff as well. 380 gold. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't actually gain the um the crest. 
So, uh, <laughs> we're not, we're not entirely out of the woods with that, uh, dungeon yet. But, uh, hold on, so who picked up the sword? Oh, you picked it up already. Oh, okay. So let's, uh, go to equipment. The thunder- look at that, man. That's just- wah! Wah! But yeah, it's a shame that no one else can equip the, um, the dragon's vein. Because, uh, that would have been great for the Prince of Canic. It's weird that he, like, can do the Lotto Sword. But, sure, okay. I'll accept it. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the sun. Uh... Oh. <laughs> the you're trying to defeat Hagen? That's insane. Anyway, I'll pray for your courage. I weave some dew yarn with a holy loom and get a water robe. There was only one person in the whole world who could make it. Oh, we, we, we haven't clarified that yet. I want to get a thunder sword. Even those who can't cast spells can use it to call forth uh, lightning. Yes, that as well. Um, the sword casts uh, Infernos, which is kind of just like the rod, but it's interesting because it's on the, the main character here. So, because he typically doesn't get anything that casts a spell. He, although he, you can equip the wizard staff, so you're not entirely caught out like that. Uh, so let's uh, oh, let's uh, save some gold first of all, because I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to make sure these reserves are coming up, and also let, nope, not taken. We are saving an item because uh, this uh, dragon sword is certainly important. Is there anything else in here that's actually like unimportant now? I don't think we need the evil statue anymore. <laughs> Uh, or the Lotto Seal. Uh, oops, oops, ah, menus, menus, ah. Menus, I, I will never be able to deal with them. Save item. Anything else, some key, holy loom? Maybe the Echo Fluid, I don't really need that anymore. Um, but I might hold on to the holy loom. And now oh, we're good. Otherwise, we'll hold on to the rest for now. Oh, hey, another another trek into the into the dungeon of woe. There's still there's still a you know a bit to look at as well. Like there obviously was more to the um the. The weird snaky floor with all the stairs that led up. 10,000 experience to get to the next level though, but... I mean, it's to be expected because the total experience, as I said, is like a million. And we're at... 50,000? 50, 51,000? It's like, ah, uh, you know... It sort of does need to pace itself out a little bit. Just a little bit. So how much damage do you lose from these? I'm at 105. 90. Ow, that one's painful. That one's very painful. How dare you. And then you gotta to touch one more before you leave. Just very cruel. And you gotta to touch one here! Lose all your health before you even get there, you know? So help before you get there with these guys. So in theory, I could use a uh, Infernos, but uh, yeah, use the sword. Woo! Woo! Ninety damage, man. That's a that's a. What's the point in attacking anymore? What's the point? Um, yeah, it's it's weird as well because I don't actually think there's no better. Actually, there is one better sword. There is actually a better sword for the Prince of Canic somewhere, so he does get something. Um, I don't think we get it here, though. I think it's actually in in the final dungeon. Let me just double check. Is it in the final dungeon, or is it actually here? Who knows? I'll I'll need a I'll need a look <laughs> look it up maybe. 
I'm glad I'm getting like two centimeters forward before it's like, oh well, we gotta gotta fight more dudes. You gotta fight the Gragoopies. Get that experience from the Gragoopies. Where's my metal slime? My metal bubble slime experience. I wanted it so much. Lots of Gragoopies. Oh, I should have casted my own bolts as well. Groupies. There we go, so that's the uh, the thunder. Use that. I don't think actually I've got a um I've got a uh fire's bane, which I guess works. Bolts of lightning! I don't think it particularly does more damage, I think it's just kind of the same. Lots of Greg Goopies. Give me a ton of experience. That's just the that's just a normal amount of experience, but okay. Oh my gosh, how many enemies are here? Is it because the repel is still active? I think it actually might be because the repel is still active. It doesn't. It doesn't do what it says on the tin. It just keeps spawning more enemies. I feel lied to. Just give him the all, all one two. Oh. I love how he attacks last, and then the next turn is like, ah, I feel like attacking first. One day I'll learn what turn order means. You know? Oops. That was a heal, and he had like three health down. Are we gonna, we're gonna have one more encounter before that because the repel is just. Oh, okay. All right. So where am I going? I'm going for the stairs. Good night, Mega Knights. I guess ultimately, though, it's like you always do make progress. There's no, there is really no like catch. Gone off. Yeah, there's no catch because it's like eh, if you die, you just go back to where you saved, and then maybe you sort of get a bit caught out by you know the amount of money you lose if you're really trying to save up a ton, but uh, you know, I guess you got a bank in this game, so that's fair. Nice! I was so close. Also, do those holes appear on the... Okay, they stay. They stay at least. Yeah, they're all over the shop. Those those holes, I tell ya. Lots of ghouls. Gabbledy ghouls. I guess as well, yeah, compared to the first game, which is like, ah, oh, that took me three streams. I mean, we're, we're like very, very close to the end of the game, but I am, like, taking some longer streams on this one as well, so... And I say very close, but it's like, you gotta have... you gotta go through most of this dungeon. The sickle! Oh my gosh. So just for reference as well... yeah, okay. Still missing the crest. Is that in Okay, was the stairs in this one or did I just miscount? Because when you got like enemies, it's like Okay, it's the next one. It's very easy to miscount.
Come on. Where is where's the stairs? There it is. Alright, let's go down. There's probably I mean there's probably uh bits all over of like which way to go. What's the ideal strat, you know? This guy's got a bit of health though. Not as much as that though. <laughs> Maybe the strat is to have uh, the main character attack other people. <laughs> Stop spell hasn't really ever been working. Like, <laughs> it's not really a problem now. Because I got like a strong sword, you know? But. Ah, the poison! Yeah, it's never really been a problem, but it's just like, it's just curious. Okay, uh, antidote. Heal, cause... Coughing a little bit. It's all good, okay. So I think if you check in here... There's nothing in here, okay. Maybe we keep going. Yes. Got a chest there. Oh. <laughs> we'll never we'll never witness that chest. Just, just gotta keep making our way out. We got the. And he, he is keepy healing. There you go. Very nice. Ah, oh, dang it. I'm just gonna throw myself at this one, man. I, I, I just wanna, like, try and get as much stuff, because it's like... I haven't even gotten one chest. You know? The slot tote, very worth it. Very, very, very worth it. I'm glad we got that. The best part as well is I could just do an outside return if I wanted to leave here forever. Let's take let's take him on, man. We got this. So how much health does an Orc King have? Because man, he's he's taking it. And then the heal more is just just cruel on top. Uh an Orc King has. 110 health. Uh, maybe slightly less, but... Eh! With the heal mores, it's just like, ah, come on, man. I like how with a crit as well, that wasn't actually enough to kill him because it's just been healing! Uh, and for reference, the gargoyle, I think, has 60. I know, right? It's like... A little bit lopsided there, but okay. Alright, so keep heading right and we'll find more stairs. More stairs for where's. Head up the stairs, and more stairs, and you'll come across a room with... The Lotto... Armor? That's right, because... I, I, I've, I've been using the Gaia Armor, this, this is the Lotto Armor. He's just casually not had his actual <laughs> Lotto armor, so just to just to rub it in, just to really, 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 really rub it in. Um, yeah, uh, Lotto armor, it's as good. And uh, just to just to, yeah, just to rub it in a little more. Pass this over to Art, and what can Art do? 
not equip it. It's a shame, but... Basically, it makes your main character just like a walking behemoth. Yeah, I'm trying to think what actually is the best armor. It might just be the, uh... The, uh... The flowing dress, which, uh... You only get one of. So you gotta choose. Do you give it to your princess, or do you give it to... I'm running away from this fight. This one's gonna be a bit mean. Yeah, you can see barely any damage to the main character. And the gargoyle is way too busy trying to stop spell. <laughs> and that's just cruel. That's just cruel. He really, really wants the stop spell. He really, really wanted to do that. Alright, we're gonna have to do a bit of walking. Oh, and I was poisoned. We're gonna have to do a bit of walking all the way to the other side of the entire, like, floor. And yeah, this is like a weird banana- well, it's not banana shape, because it doesn't really curve. But it just snakes around. Hi, I- I wanna flee. Do you like how there's a defense option as well? When... When will anyone ever... Oh, boy. When will anyone ever take the defense option? Because it's like, what do, what do I want my main character to do? Like, not attack? Like, that's what he's good at. He's just going to deal tons of damage. We're going to be riding the line on this one. Very, very caught up in stop spell. I like how the problem right now is like my luck of running away is just getting worse and worse. I'm not sure what I, I'm always like I always feel like uh, your running away odds in lots of games gets worse as you attempt to run away more and more. I always feel that like every single game is like that, but I don't know. Oh my gosh. Listen, if I get- if I get lucky, I might make this to the chest. Nope! Monsters suddenly attack! Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. oh, so close! Right there, I can smell it! I can smell it! No, I'm gonna cop it. I'm gonna cop it. Uh, I'm copping it. Ah, oh, the chest was right there. The chest was right there. Ah, oh. we gotta. We're, I gotta go again. I gotta just do it. Ah, oh, that's just frustrating. That's just frustrating. It was right there. Uh, da -da -da, revive it. Da -da -da. So close, so close, so close yet so far. So I'm just curious, like, so there's five, there's five crests. I've got the the star crest, the moon crest, the water crest. I guess that's the life crest. Did I miss? I feel like I actually did miss one. Yeah, because we got the life... Yeah, wait, hold on, we did, did get the life crest right. Alright, hold on, real talk. Real talk. Real talk. 
I think I missed the crest in the volcano. I think I actually missed it in the volcano. And we actually don't need to wander back to, like, this cave. Because, I mean, even though there is the one chest, the, there's the one corner of the map, which I still haven't been able to go in, that's actually just for a fun item. I think I'm actually... I actually just need to go back into the volcano again. Which is sort of cruel, but, uh... Yeah, now I'm curious. Hold on, yeah. Did I legitimately miss? Where is this? Hold on, yeah, wait, wait, where is this? Uh... Oh my gosh, hold on, yeah. I think I actually did just awkwardly miss this, and just, I'm just wandering right past when really, because the worst part is that, like, yeah, once you get all five crests, you gotta do a thing outside. So hold on, I think this actually was... Back it up, back it up. I'm glad the repel wore off now, by the way. I was so close to getting those items in. Dang, dude. So close. Uh, sail down a little bit. Where am I on the map? <laughs> Always lose track. Always lose track. This is... I mean, oh, well, granted, it's worse on the Game Boy version because it's zoomed in. But it's not great on the NES version either, to be fair. Um... I think this particular shrine... Nice, by the way. Just... Encounter... Encounter of a lifetime right here. Watch out for your gas, A. Eh? And the gas, B, and all that jazz. 164 damage, though. That's actually, that's, that's really fun, because the, um, I'm pretty sure, like, the end boss... Oh, he's got a fair bit of health. He's got a fair bit of health, but it's like, yeah, if you can cast, like, if you can do 160-something damage. You know, at some point, I'm starting to feel like this fight is just not worth it. Like, they're not hidden hard, they're actually missing. And I just keep, yeah, stuff it, just, just run away. Ah, come on. <laughs> This is... what is happening here? I just want to leave! I just want to leave! I'm getting stuck by just a party of goop... Oh my gosh, yeah! Come on, you gotta do the rule, which is if you try to run twice, the third one always has to work. You gotta do that, right? Holy... holy moly, man. So if we go here... Uh... Oh boy, which one was it? I have a thing- oh no, this is just literally right where I was. I have a thing that says the sun crest is in... the fire monolith. My brain's going fire monolith. Not here, right? Because this is just the bridge. We we've explored everywhere here, right? Oh, wait, 
right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna have to grill this game for this one because uh. So you can see that you can walk out of the side here. If you look at this one tree. That's what I was missing. <laughs> that's that's what I was. That's just. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a that's a doozy of a location. So now, now we need to somehow uh, turn all those uh, crests into a uh, a charm. I think uh, where? Hold on. This is at uh, this one shrine, which is where's the where's this shrine? I think it's actually the one that's just up here. Hold on, let's do a quick heal because I know everyone's like copped it. I keep thinking Nana's got way more health than she actually does. So pass this place. And we should see this shrine. There we go. This place I wandered into just kind of accidentally in one. Uh, I guess. I guess the, actually it was the last shrine. Um, so now navigating down and down. So now we have all five of the uh, of the the pieces. And coming here, the five seals began to glow. A beautiful voice echoes. Who called me? I am Rubus, the Earth Elemental. Oh, you must be the descendants of Lotto. I know. Long ago I made a promise to Lotto. It is now time to fulfill it. Now, I will grant you the Rubus charm. If you are ever confronted and confounded by an evil illusion, use it. It surely will be of help. This is uh, required to beat the game. <laughs> now go on, children of Lotto. I will always watch over you. This is a required item to beat the game. And that's kind of the whole point of why we were collecting all these things. Um, so with that, I think... I'll head off to the to the base camp and call it, call it for the day. Um, our goal now is just to head through that cave, use this charm to not be, you know, fooled by illusions. Which uh, is important, that will come up uh, very soon. Once we get in there. And then it's a uh, fight a lot of dudes and don't die. That is, that is the key, the key word of not dying, but hey, the more experience you get, the better. The more metal slimes that somehow I come across would be better. I'm glad, I'm glad this crest wasn't just casually in, um, in the, uh, the, like, the underground maze. I was looking at the map going like, I didn't, I don't think I missed it in there. And it's like, no, because it was uh, just a random shrine. Level 16, time to give her, you know, some stats. <laughs> Every level feels very, like, substantial in this game, I will say that. Like, you do get something real, real strong out of a, out of a level up. A good old level up, makes you feel good. Alright, have I sailed way too far? Oh. Maybe? No, I don't think I sailed far enough, because if I go down and left, I'm gonna find the, you know, the peak of this island. Oops. Not, not far down enough. Whoops. And what, what is it gotta be? We gotta, we gotta throw six more enemies my way. Just keep throwing them all. I don't even remember this many enemies in, like, Dragon Quest three. Like, and I know Dragon Quest 3 has a, a three-party system as well, um... I want to say Dragon Quest 4 had a three-party system in the NES version. And then the DS version had four. And then every other game has basically had four. I think four fits better, because... The party dynamics of three is like... 
I don't know, it, it keeps it tight, but it does mean that, like, you can't have attacker, magic user, uh, healer, and weird rogue. You can't do that. It's like, no, you gotta, you gotta choose three of those. And it's interesting, but I guess it depends, I don't know. Which one's the one game where it's like, your party is like seven? It's like weirdly big for what it is. Don't say Pokemon, that's cheating. Because also, you only fight things one-on-one -on -one in Pokemon most of the time. Even every single game that has double battles, except for Colosseum and XD. All of these games that have double battles in Pokemon, and they don't really utilize them very much. I commented in Pokemon Sapphire, there were like eight double battles the whole game. Like, it could have been way more. Don't get me started about triple battles in black and white. I swear there were, th there were like two in the entire game. There were two triple battles and one like swap battle or mix battle. I don't even know. So anyways, with that, I think that's a good point to rest. Um, we got the other two crests and uh, joined them to make a charm and sort of just died and explored a bunch of really long dungeons, but I think that was all good. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream or you missed parts of it, uh, you can always view the VOD on YouTube. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe where you'll see the VOD updates. Or uh, if you're on uh, YouTube and you want to see them live on Twitch, I stream at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, every Monday. That's basically when these are. Where I'll just keep playing on. We play, we play something new, play something old. Pretty much anything, pretty much. Uh, so that's all good. Um, if you want weird tweets, uh, don't go on Twitter, because I don't tweet on Twitter. But uh, you can find uh, me on uh, Pleroma. Go to m.bnd.com. I got a link in the description always uh, to go there. Follow me on the Feddy. Um, so that's always good. Um, I don't know, can you RSS feed the Feddy? I don't think you can. Maybe there's a tool that does that. Maybe. So, anyways, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late like I did, and. Uh, I guess, play Chrono Cross? That game was good. It's on Steam, actually. It's like, it, it might be alright on Steam, so... See ya!